I shape train jumping through a hoop because it's a prop and I shape train all my behaviors where I need my dog to interact with a prop. So if you remember my other videos, first grade, I'm going to mark and reward when my dog quits paying attention to distraction. So she's disconnecting from a distraction. Second grade, I will mark and reward when she looks in the direction of the prop. Come here, please. Good. Third grade is I will mark and reward when she looks at the prop. Fourth grade, I'm going to mark and reward when she approaches the prop. Fifth grade, I will mark and reward when she interacts with the prop. And sixth grade, I will mark and reward when she interacts appropriately with the prop. So since she's done a lot of shape training, she's going to graduate through the lower levels fairly quickly. And I'll show you what that looks like. If you and your dog are new to shape training, it's gonna take a while to figure out the rules of the game. So you need a lot of patience, sit please, sit good girl. You need a lot of patience because before the dog has had very much experience shape training, what happens is they're spending all their time and energy creating files in their brain for the rules of the game. Once they know, and see she's just trying to figure out what I want. Once they know the rules, now all they have to do is put this new information in the files and they learn exponentially. It's just so easy and so fast to teach them a new behavior. When I first start out, I'm gonna have the hoop on the ground so it's very stable. I'm going to have a handful of treats. I'll just put it down. Yes, and she actually nose touched it. Yes, good girl. And this is actually kind of small for her because she's, yes, sorry, I missed it, there it is. She's hitting it and moving it as she goes through because it's so low, yes. So she went through on her own being a dog that's, here it is, baby, a dog that's used to shape training, she has learned to figure out what it is that I want her to do with the prop in order to get the reward. So it was pretty easy for her to go through this on the ground. In fact, she was going through without me even offering. So now I'm going to hold it up just a bit. So I'm going to stabilize it with my legs as I start moving it up. I don't want it to wobble too much and kill her confidence before she has mastered the behavior. So it's going to be fairly low. Yes, good girl. And obviously that was not an issue. Yes. And here she's an agility dog. She knows to jump. She knows the tire. She's just never gone through a hoop that I've held before. But you can see that she knows what I want. She just figured it out. Right. Get back. Back. So now I want to give a little bit of distance. Wait, wait. Go girly, here it is, here, okay. Yes, and since she knows the behavior, now I can start putting a word to it. And I'm gonna put a word to the behavior before I start raising the hoop up. Since my dog is an agility dog and already knows the word jump, I'm just going to use jump it's okay if you use a different word for each different prop and you want your dog to be able to identify. So you could say hoop, you could say circle, you could say whatever you want. I'm gonna stick with jump because that's what my dog knows. Jump, yes, and we got stuck. She was just too exuberant for the treat and she moved it. So what I need to do now, because dash is so high energy, wait. Now I need to start using distance, wait. Jump, yeah, right there. Jump, good girl. And I'm gonna throw it far enough that she needs distance right there. Jump, yes. Jump, good. Here it is, look, right here. Good girl. And now I can go up even a little bit higher. So now that I start raising it, I absolutely need her to have some distance. Right here, sit, stay, get back, stay, get back, sit, sit, jump, good girl, right here, back up, sit, sit, jump, good, good. Now that Dash has the concept, I'm going to go ahead and back up back her up even more so I can start raising it. I need her to have 
some momentum before she goes up. If your dog is more limber, more flexible, and younger, Dash is going to be 10, um, then you don't need that distance. But with a 10-year-old Doberman that doesn't have a lot of flex to their back, I now need to have some distance. Come here. Dash, sit. Sit. Stay. Stay. Get the treats ready. No. Get back. Jump. Good. There it is. Jump. And see, this is what happens when she's so focused on her treat. Jump. Right here. Jump. Go get it. So uh, this dog is obviously very treat motivated and very crazy. It would be better if we weren't on grass so she could see her treat better. In order to get height off of her, I need to be able to work at a distance. And I also need to be able to toss the treat. I couldn't toss the treat on the grass. She was spending all her time looking for it. So we're going to move to a surface where she can see it better. I'm not going to ask her to jump high, but I do want a little bit more height than what I did because this is concrete. You don't want repetitive jumping on an unforgiving surface that could eventually just put too much stress on their joints. Get back, get back, stay. Jump. And see, she's still concentrating on my hand. Get back, get back, stay. Jump. Yes, there it is. Jump. Jump. Good. Jump. There we go. Jump. Oops, you missed. Dash, get back. Jump. Good. Jump. Dash. Jump. Good. Jump. Yes. So this is showing you, I'm not taking my trained dog and showing you the steps to do it. I'm actually working through with a dog that has never gone through the hoop because you see how she's missing it. You see how she's being a goober. Get back. I'm still going to stabilize this against my body so it doesn't wobble too much. Jump. Yes. Jump. Yes. Jump. Yes. Jump. What's happening is when they're new to a behavior, they may only have so many repetitions in their brain to work through it, and she's obviously used it up. So we just gave her a little bit of a timeout so that she could recharge. It's kind of like turning the fan on your computer so the hard drive cools down. And let's see if we can process through that again. Back up. We're going to back up this way. Back up. Wait. Get back. Jump. There you go. Jump. Good. There you go. Jump. Yes. That was my fault. I didn't stabilize it. Jump. Good. And that was her fault. She hit my hand. So I think she is not going right through the center because she doesn't trust me. So she was, she got her feet caught on it. And so then she jumped higher than she needed to, but she hit her head on the hoop. So she just needs to work through the process. So this is going to take me probably two to three training sessions. Intellectually, she knows what she needs to do. Now she just needs to figure out where she needs to put her body through the hoop in order to not touch it. Jump. Yeah, good one. See, you can tell there's just not a lot of confidence going on. Back up. Get back. Stay. Jump. Yes, that was pretty. Jump. Nice. Very pretty. Jump. Oops, you miss. You miss. Get back. Get, get over here. Get back. Get back. Jump. Atta girl. And we'll stop with that. She's getting sloppy. She's hitting it. She gave me a couple of really, really, really pretty ones. And now she needs to be able to process that. And the next lesson will go quite a bit faster.